Now, in this next section of the uh, HPLC topic, we're going to talk a little bit about um, some HPLC troubleshooting, some common problems that we tend to see during HPLC analyses, and what could be the causes of these problems, and um, how do we go about solving them. So three of the most common problems, uh, broadly speaking, are abnormal pump pressure, um, retention issues. So retention issues could be, for example, um, shifting of peaks, so the retention time of peaks start changing, so that is not normal. And last thing is detection issues. Sometimes we are not able to detect the peaks that we are expected to see. Sometimes we um, detect, but the peaks may be particularly low or particularly high. So these are three of the common problems that we'll be discussing briefly in the next few slides. The first is abnormally high pump pressure. So this is very common. Um, typically caused by some sort of blockage. So you know, we note down two types of blockage here. The first is column clogging. Earlier I mentioned that the column is actually very tightly packed with all sorts of particles uh, making up the stationary phase. That's where uh, retention occurs. But of course, over time, as these columns are used, um, it could build up um, all sorts of various contaminants and chemicals and compounds that start clogging the column. So therefore, over time, when the column is worn, um, we could start seeing a uh, climb in the pump pressure because the column is blocked. Another uh, potential issue is pre precipitation along um, the solvent line. So where the solvent is flowing, for example, from the mobile phase reservoir, through the pump, to the column, to a detector. So these are all places where the solvent is flowing through. Why would precipitation occur? Well, imagine if today I run an experiment and I have all sorts of uh, funny chemicals, um, sometimes um, dilute salt solutions um, flowing through my solvent lines. Then I complete my experiment and say I go on vacation for two months. Well, of course, during these two months, the liquid will start to evaporate and uh, leave behind uh, the, the salt particles, right? In solid form, precipita precipitated along these solvent lines. So after two months, when I come back and I try to run another experiment, suddenly I might see high pump pressure because now these solid particles are blocking uh, the flow of my solvent through the lines. So this could be uh, one such scenario where this occurs. Typically, um, the solution to clogging is to flush the column and the lines with various solvents that these uh, contaminants or block blockage species are able to dissolve with. Right? So if we uh, think that uh, salt precipitation is an issue, we will flush with water because salt should dissolve in water very well. If we predict there is some other kind of contaminant that would be dissolvable in a uh, organic solvent, we would then flush the lines or the column with that um, organic solvent. So it could be acyl nitrile or methanol and so forth. Now the next potential issue is abnormally low pressure. So this is the opposite from having high pressure. So a low pressure is typically indicative of a leak in the system. So a leak um, could be somewhere um, where the line is connected to the column, for example. So if it's not tightly connected, uh, it could cause liquid to leak out. Therefore, it will present itself as a low pressure. Um, it could be that sometimes uh, various parts, such as the connecting joints, are worn out, they are old, so therefore um, they are not sealed properly and therefore causing a leak. Another common problem is the presence of an air bubble between the pump and the mobile phase reservoir. So recall that uh, we have a mobile phase reservoir connected to a pump, which typically pumps the mobile phase towards the column. Now, sometimes if again we leave our instrument there for quite a long time, the liquid in the tubing actually evaporates away, leaving us a big air bubble. So when the pump tries to draw liquid from the mobile phase reservoir, it encounters this um, big air bubble and the air bubble does not generate enough surface tension to pull the liquid uh, into the pump. So therefore, uh, the pump will not be able to suck liquid from the reservoir and it will register as an abnormally low pump pressure. So how do we solve that? Well, there is a built-in solution 
uh, something we call um, purging of the solvent lines. So if we set the instrument to purge mode, what the instrument will do is that it will draw solvents from the reservoir to the pump at a very high flow rate. So this high flow rate enables us to push the air bubble out of the system and therefore fill our lines again with mobile phase. So we talked about high pump pressure and we also talked about low pump pressure. Now we'll talk about uh, retention issues next. The first uh, and most common problem is when we see our retention times um, randomly shifting. So for example, if last time you were analyzing a particular compound and it was always uh, showing up at four and a half minutes retention time. Now suddenly, uh, sometimes it's five minutes, sometimes it's five and a half minutes, sometimes it's three and a half minutes, the um, peak is showing up all over the place. So uh, this could mean that the retention mechanism, which is caused by the column, is not functioning that well. And this could be due to the column being worn out or the column being contaminated. So therefore, um, if it's contaminated, it means that its um, stationary phase particles has all sorts of things on it, and therefore uh, your analyte molecules are not able to retain uh, on the stationary phase as reproducibly as you like. Uh, this also happens when columns are used uh, for many, many, many runs, so the stationary phase can also be worn out, and therefore it does not do its job properly of uh, retaining the various analyte molecules. Now, uh, sometimes when we install a column, we like to allow mobile phase to flow through the column for roughly 20 to 30 minutes before doing our analysis. This is known as column equilibration time. So we have to let the stationary phase condition or acclimatize to the new mobile phase before doing our analysis. This will help uh, in keeping retention times uh, the same throughout all our runs. If sometimes we rush and we do not give it enough time, we do not give it 25, 30, 40 minutes of mobile phase flowing through, then the uh, stationary phase may not be well equilibrated and therefore it does not perform its job very well. So therefore you get uh, shifts in the retention times of your peaks. So of course, if the column is old, the natural thing to do would be to buy a new column. Or if it's contaminated, then of course, we want to again, try to figure out what is actually contaminating it and therefore um, select a solvent that we can use to flush out this contaminants. Of course, if we have uh, insufficient equilibration time, then we should um, be a bit patient and allow the column to equilibrate for a slightly longer period of time prior to our analysis. So these two things typically help to um, weave out any uh, retention time issues. Now the last uh, issue we'll be talking about briefly is detection issues. Here you see the first thing is that we have uh, a noisy baseline. So earlier I mentioned that noise is all these random fluctuations of the uh, baseline that you see. So this we call a very noisy baseline, a very uh, noisy peak. So this is not what we like, right? We like a flat baseline with no noise. So this could be due to the UV vis detector um, being worn out. So sometimes it's used for too long. So the lamp is um, reaching the end of its lifetime. So therefore you get very, very um, noisy, very, very uh, fluctuating kind of detector response. Of course, the UV lamp is very much like uh, the light bulb in our house. It has a fixed lifetime. It's not able to last forever. So therefore, um, when the time is up, it's important to um, maintain and change this part out. Another potential issue is air bubbles. Now, earlier we mentioned in the topic that um, air bubbles tend to wreak havoc on HPLC analysis. So that is why we have things like a inbuilt degasser to remove these air bubbles and uh, micro bubbles. So if somehow air bubbles or micro bubbles find their way to the detector, typically they would cause the response to fluctuate all over the place, thereby uh, presenting as a noisy baseline. 
The last thing is uh, typically we like our pump to be um, pumping liquid or mobile phase and sample through the instrument very smoothly. But of course, over time, sometimes the pump also becomes worn out and it's not able to pump liquid smoothly. So you actually get um, intermittent pulses, right? Um, little skips in the pumping mechanism and therefore this could cause um, all sorts of little jumps in our uh, detected baseline and peaks. So there's not that much uh, uh, magical solutions for detector issues. Of course, if the UV lamp is worn out, we definitely do want to change it, um, change out the parts. If we find that um, air bubbles are reaching the detector, we definitely want to make sure that the degasser is functioning properly and is able to remove all the air bubbles and micro bubbles in the um, solvents and samples. And the last thing would be um, if the pump is uh, not pumping smoothly, now of course we might want to get that repaired or we want to change it out. Now continuing on detection issues, we sometimes see that our baseline drifts upwards. Now this is of course very abnormal, we would like our baseline to be nice and flat, uh, a horizontal line, but sometimes we see that um, our baseline without sample or, or anything being present gradually moves upwards. So this could be due to um, the column being worn out and therefore sometimes when the stationary phase is worn out, it starts to uh, detach from the column and starts flowing towards the detector. So if all those uh, strange uh, particles and um, beads are flowing towards the detector and reach the detector, it will cause um, the baseline to register as though uh, something is showing up. So therefore you get sort of a rising baseline. Um, sometimes it's also that there are strange species contaminating our mobile phase. So therefore these various contaminants or strange species are making their way to the detector and therefore registering as a signal. So that's why uh, the baseline is going up. Well, of course, um, if the column is worn out and it's bleeding, bleeding meaning that um, its stationary phase is actually dislodging from the column and traveling all the way to the detector, then definitely it's time to buy a new column. It's worn out, it's not working well. Um, if this drifting baseline is due to the mobile phase contaminants that are present, then we definitely want to make new solutions that are clean and pure. So as we uh, close this topic, we just want to present um, various types of applications of HPLC. Of course, we see that we have our four famous types of um, chromatography for, for liquid chromatography and um, the corresponding types of analyte compounds that these can be used to analyze. So of course, I do not want you to memorize this table, but of course, we want to appreciate that, um, for example, ionic exchange uh, would be for charged species ions, size exclusion would be for um, large uh, molecular weight compounds that are significantly different in size, um, normal phase uh, HPLC would typically be for um, separation of polar and non-polar things and similar for reverse phase. So again, um, hope that we can uh, present an understanding of all these various types of HPLC and um, hope that it will not purely be a memorization exercise.